In today's episode of the Python Presents podcast, I have an interesting guest here with me today, Amber Freddy Duvar, and he's sailing over from the team at Ronad, a strategic digital support for determined brands out there. And we want to really figure out, you know, what Ronad is all about, how they're supporting their clients to build out, you know, their digital strategies and growth, and also how uh, Freddy's thinking about growth for Ronad in itself. So it's going to be another interesting episode today. So let's jump in. Welcome to the show, Freddy. Amazing. Thank you very much for having me. Of course. Yeah. So maybe for people who haven't heard about Ronet before, maybe if you give us, you know, a 360 review at the very beginning, but before we're jumping into, you know, deeper questions. Yeah, sure. So um, Ronet are a digital agency based in Ascot, Berkshire in the UK. Um, and our primary objective is to create long-term positive impact by uh, defining, designing and delivering digital products and services that will help our audience reach their goals and also to be able to justify their investment in us. Mm -hmm. Very succinct, very clear. Uh, Samir, what types of companies uh, would you say you're working with? Is there a certain sort of, you know, certain size, a certain industry that, you know, should be in in order to be a great fit uh, for Warnet? No, we're pretty industry agnostic. So over the past few years, we've been growing. So we're after SMEs. Well, we're working more with SMEs um, and large organizations and pretty much enterprises. Um, in terms of sectors, we will operate both in the B2B, B2C, and some E2E, depending on what they're after. But yeah, no, it's all good. That makes sense. Um, what would you say, who within those organizations is actually, you know, reaching out and says, you know, we need some partner like Ronet? Like, is that, you know, does it come, does it come from the CMO side? Does it come from the C-suite? Does it come maybe from somewhere totally else in the company, typically? Uh, where they say, you know what, we need a partner like you, like you guys. Yeah, so um, ten, well, generally depends on the size of the organization. So normally it would be a marketer, whether it's the CMO, head of marketing, vice president of marketing, they're, they're normally the ones that reach out um, and start the, the conversation. Uh, but then we very much get ingrained to the rest of the business and start talking to pretty much everyone, any key stakeholder. Mm. And what would you say, how do these guys learn about Ronet? Like, what's the typical journey, you would say, um, you know, that they go through in order to hear about you guys and get and getting started? Yeah, so traditionally, um, it's always been about either word of mouth or brand evangelists, where we've had clients that moved on, gone into a bigger organization, and basically have championed Ronet um, through and through. Um, but more recently, over the past three or four years, we've started to invest quite significantly in our digital offering, mm. because obviously you have to practice what you preach. Um, and that's been having quite good results uh, to the extent that it's more about brand awareness and conversations that our sales team would then have with, with these um, prospects. And yeah, we've just been taking it from there. Mm -hmm. I mean, you work, you work primarily, obviously, with Ronit's clients. Um, what would you say, just, you know, maybe high level overview, like, you know, what, what can they expect, you know, when they work with somebody like yourself, like in which key areas do you guys support them? Is there certain sort of, you know, routines or workflows you would set up with them? Just maybe give us a high, high level overview. Yeah. Um, so normally we operate within um, what we call the four Ds. So they are the discovery, the define, the design and the deliver phase. So part mm -hmm. of our discovery is to really get into the client's mindset, understand what their current situation is, what their problems are, what their competitors do, are doing, and more importantly, what their end users are really after. From there, we'll probably define a digital strategy, not so much just what we build, but also how we then help them take it to market, how we then extract the information and data that's needed in order to make informed decisions thereafter, um, and then start to design what the solution would be structurally, then value prop wise, um, and finally what the physical thing would, would look like. And then obviously we, we would then deliver that. Um, what's really good about our process is that it becomes iterative. So once we've finished what we've designed and then delivered it, we then go back into the discover phase. So all of that starts again. So instead of being stagnant, you're constantly developing what you are looking to build. Mm -hmm. What do you think about the website? Like, how do you think about Ronet's website? Like, what role does it play for those customers who are going through the process that you just told me? 
you know, what role does it play in their journey of getting started with Ronit? So our site mainly is to showcase what we do and also understand what they're going to expect by working with us. So when, when you look through our case studies, it's not so much that, oh yeah, we've done X, Y, and Z and delivered 300, 400% ROI, et cetera. Uh, it's more about the journeys and what our actual customers say about working with us, uh, which kind of gives us more of a, a humane aspect, if you will, as opposed to just being super data driven, which I personally really like. But obviously, at the end of the day, it's about building, building relationships. Mm. Very cool. Um, you know, speaking just about the website for just another couple of seconds, like because marketers always they have, you know, they're super critical with the pages. I know you work sort of more on the, the external side, but still maybe you had your thoughts one or two, like where do you see sort of a strength? Of the Ronet page versus where do you say even you know room for for improvement or maybe you know maybe internally there's already some discussions like where where do you see the website heading uh, down the line? So at the moment, like I said, it's really brochurey to the to the extent that this is who we are, this is what we're about, this is the great work we've done. Uh, where we're looking to develop is more about becoming a bit more lead generation, mm -hmm. but more from an education perspective as opposed to trying to win over every single person that comes to the site as a prospect. Um, mm. That way we're giving back a bit to say, actually, look, if you're looking to achieve this, this is how other companies that we've worked with have done it. Um, sometimes that's enough. Sometimes people just like to have that reassurance. Um, if not, we've had people that have reached out um, to say, uh, actually, how can we take this further? Um, we're noticing that quite strongly with LinkedIn at the moment, um, but hopefully we're looking to expand into other of the digital channels we operate in and eventually go into more of our marketing automation tactics. Very cool. Now, um, I would like to switch gears a little bit because we talked about what you guys are doing at Ronda. We talked about sort of the growth channels a little bit. I would love to talk, you know, a bit more sort of about your journey um, as a marketer. Um, you know, there's so much content out there for marketers to to keep educating themselves, to grow. You Obviously, you being um, sort of thrown into new scenarios with each every new client that is coming in. Where do you personally like to educate yourself? Like, where do you find high quality resources, peers um, that you would like, that you enjoy to learn from? Or with? So I started out learning about digital marketing from the days of Rand Fishkin at Moz. Um, and back in the day, we used to go to pretty much every Brighton SEO here in the UK, mm -hmm. which really expanded like my following. Um, but as we started to use SEM Rush and Ahrefs a lot more. Their blogs and content marketing are phenomenal. Um, obviously, we keep up with SEJ um, and Roundtable, etc. But the the content marketing that Ahrefs do and SEM Rush is really good. Uh, not so much from our. This is what we think it's going to for like the industry as a whole. But also when they start to release new features that we use on our day to day basis, they explain it really well. Um, obviously, they are paid platforms and there are the substitutions out there. But from a personal perspective, that's where I pretty much go. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Um, as we're slowly approaching towards the, the end of the interview already, time is flying. Um, I have some rapid fire questions. Are you ready for those? Yeah, cool. Let's go. What is the last book you read or the one book you would recommend any marketer should read? Ah. Uh. I would have to say it's probably LinkedIn Unlocked. Uh, that's the last book I've read. Mm -hmm. um, can't remember it because I don't really read marketing books that often. Um, nice. But yeah, it'll be that. Very good. What is the one single thing your company is focused on the most at the moment? Um, at the moment, it's all about GA4. Um, especially from my, my department side of things, it's really understanding the impacts that we're having from UA, especially with how things are changing legislation wise in some of the EU countries and where we're going to with all the cookie um, compliance that we're trying to navigate through in this modern age. Yeah, maybe let me ask a quick follow up and we'll be back to the, the rapid fire questions then, because what's quite interesting is, you know, what do you see marketers currently doing? Because obviously you talk to a lot. What do you see marketers doing about sort of, you know, third party cookies going to be out of the browser end of uh, the year or beginning next year? 
Um, what do you see marketers are doing and what do you think they should be doing uh, these days to prepare? So what we probably should be to, well, what we are trying to do with our clients is really trying to leverage our first party data. Um, historically, there's always been a reliance on Google Analytics. Um, obviously, other brands are out there, but pretty much every marketer that I've worked with has always grown up with, with GA. Um, so now it's more about looking at how we can leverage our own data, either at a um, server log perspective or where we're gathering information, how we split that up, um, and more about correlation analysis, um, just as a gear up. Obviously, there's still going to be the kind of people that, like myself, are fine with being um, marketed to and sharing their analytics data. Uh, but obviously, that's now going to be a sample as opposed to the full truth. Um, so yeah, it's, it's really about what you can do with your own data and what correlation can be taken with the limited data that we'll be getting. Mm -hmm. And, um, do you have the impression that marketers kind of already realize what's happening or do you feel you mean a lot of people where there is not yet sort of, it's, it's not yet a priority. Let's put it. I like think that. that heavily depends on the size of organization. So okay. obviously the larger the organization, they're more com not compliant. Uh, they're more um, aware of where we need to get to. Um, mm. But it is interesting having those conversations because they're like, oh, actually, well, we could do this. And in a lot of cases, we can't. Um, what, what really becomes apparent is how we use CMPs, so our cookie management platforms, um, and how we optimize that, that journey. Um, but yeah it's a ever changing landscape. So yeah, that's been quite fun. Very cool. So back to the rapid fire questions. Um, what's the last thing that kept you awake at night about the business? Probably this interview. Oh, wow. <laughs> I'm, not sure really should feel, <laughs> I'm not sure if I should feel honored or bad. <laughs> Very good. Um, if there would be no boundaries in technology, what would be the one thing that you would fix for your marketing role today? Um, probably how we centralize data, just because obviously you spread yourself so thin on different channels that you kind of really need to understand how everything plays a part. And, always, and every platform you use has its own ways of reporting or has its own ways of optimizing that you kind of have to use their native metrics in order to really paint a picture of what's going on. Um, so it's probably how all of that can be centralized and leveraged straight from the initial contact that they've had with whatever thing we're trying to do, right to the point of um, sales and even post sales. Mm -hmm. And for the very last question, I would like to do a little bit of time travel. Let's go back to the days of the University of Birmingham. Um, you're heading out of formal education into the world of marketing and uh, you, know, you, you were in, in search and SEM as well. Um, what's the one advice you would give yourself for your journey? Um, I would probably say that not trying to do everything all the time by yourself. Um, just because you think that is the right thing to do, you should always lean on people that are just as passionate of you as you are and you can delegate um, the workload to. That, that's probably the one thing that I've struggled with for the past like 10 years. Makes a lot of sense. Freddie, I really appreciate you took the time with us today to be a guest on Pathmark Presents. I want to give you the very last word. If somebody would be forgetting all about Rona that we discussed today, what's the one thing that they should remember? They should remember that we are an extension of any internal team. Everything that we do is based on the partnerships. Um, so if they're looking for a digital partner that's willing to take them to the next level, that, that's Rona. Thanks a lot for being a guest on Parkland Presents. Thank you.